Hello everybody, Chris here. And in this video, I wanted to show all of you the basics of using 3D titles inside of DaVinci Resolve 18. So this is going to be a really simple setup that I'll walk you guys through. But as you can see, these 3D text elements are floating around in 3D space and we can aim a 3D camera at them from any angle that we want to view the text titles from. So if you want to set something like this up, go to your edit page, open up the effects library, go to toolbox and then down to effects and look for fusion composition. So let's go ahead and drop this onto the timeline. Titles are usually gonna go on video check two or above, so that's why I'm gonna put it there, so that your base video clip can serve as the background on video track one. So with the fusion composition, it's going to be five seconds by default. If you want to expand or reduce the duration of your title, you could do that now by adjusting the ending and starting points of your video by trimming the edges there. So let's jump over to the fusion page, and you're going to see media out down here in the node graph. So for a 3D scene in Resolve, you're going to need a 3D renderer. So let's attach that to a 3D text node. With nothing selected, I'm going to click on 3D text up here above the node graph. And then I'm going to click on 3D renderer, which is the one at the end. So if we show this 3D renderer on the left view, like so, then we'll just see basically this checkered background because there's nothing on the text right now either. So let's take the text 3D element and add some text to it. I'll just put tutorial here and you'll see in the 3D renderer preview that it's already converted back into a 2D image, which is required before we get to media out since video is, of course, 2D. So with text 3D selected, let's also add in a merge node, which we'll need to add any extra items to our 3D scene, like a camera or other text elements or shapes or even imported 3D model objects. So let's click on text 3D and then a merge node is right over here to the right of text 3D add that in and then make sure your text 3d is connected here so i'm going to disconnect the connection to render 3d and text 3d is going to go here and then merge goes to the render so now we have this extra input the green input here uh, that we can use for adding extra elements before that though let's make the preview for merge 3d on the left so click on that little left view arrow and then you'll see the 3d view pop up so right now in the merge 3D node, it's still as part of a 3D scene. It's only after it goes to the 3D render that we get our 2D image. So connect render 3D to media out. And then on the right, if you haven't changed the right view, you should see the final rendering of your title. Okay, so next we need a camera attached to this merge 3D node so that we can control the view in our 3D space. So click merge 3D and then uh, look for a 3D camera over here on the right. So if you click that, it'll automatically connect it into the 3D node over here. So if you hold down Alt and then you press down on middle mouse button, you can hold them both down and drag around the 3D space to rotate. If you hold Control down and you scroll the middle mouse wheel, then you can zoom out. So with those two functions, you can move around the scene quite easily to see what you have in your scene. So Right now we can tell that the camera is way too close to the tutorial text here, and that's probably why we can't see anything on the media out node. So I'm gonna click camera 3D as our node, and you'll see gizmos to move our 3D object around the 3D scene. So I'm gonna move the camera way further out so that we can actually see the text in place. If we rotate around the scene, once again, Alt and press down middle mouse wheel, then we can see that our 3D text is in 3D space, but it's not much of a solid 3D object. So if you click on that, you can go to the inspector and down to extrusion. And then if we add extrusion depth here, it's going to make our text pop out. Then it's going to make each of the characters look a lot more like a 3D object. Okay, so if we go to frame zero and we were to just hit play and leave it like this, static with no animation it wouldn't be very interesting even though it is a 3d scene technically we're either going to want to animate the camera or animate our text around the scene to make some kind of more visually interesting output uh, first i'll adjust the camera's position moving it up a little bit so that we're looking right at the center of our text so that in the media out here it centers the text around the screen Next, let's add some simple animations to our 3D text. I'm just going to select it, go to frame zero, and we can start keyframing in the inspector. So let's keyframe the size at zero. So let's add it to zero and then keyframe it. And then let's go to, let's say at frame 60, which is uh, one second in time for the 60 FPS timeline. And I'll keyframe it here at one second. 
So now if we go to frame zero and we hit play, our text is going to grow in size for that one second. If it takes a little while for it to render the first time, don't worry about it. When you actually export to the final video, it should play back at the normal speed. Okay, so now that our text is growing in size, what if we rotated the camera around the text in order to look at it from all angles over the course of this five second animation? So I'm going to click on the camera 3D. Let's go to the transform tab. So what we can do in the transform is use a target as the position where our text is going to be in the center area. And then as we move the camera around the scene, we can keep having it point at that target, regardless of where we position the camera, which will allow us to see the text from all angles. So let's check use target and then drag the pick tool, left click and hold over to probably the O on where our text is over here. So you can see the camera is now pointing where we need it to go. And I'll let go when it's at the O. And now if we adjust the translation X, Y, Z, it's always going to point towards that target, which is really cool because we can move the camera around the scene and having it track and point at the text is now super easy. So let's go to frame zero and we will keyframe the X, Y, and Z translation just leave it at there for now and then let's go to frame 60 and let's adjust the position of our camera so you can use the wheels over here you could put in a manual value or we could use the gizmos in the scene so i'm just going to use the gizmo and position this to where i think it should be at frame 60. so let's get it over there and now if we go to frame zero and hit play we're going to have that sliding animation for the camera but at every frame it's going to be pointing towards the text so we could keep going at frame 120 and let's rotate around the scene let's move the camera to the back over here just going to keep adjusting the xyz positions with the gizmos until i have it in a spot i want if you need precise values of course you can always type those in on the inspector but we're just going to estimate it here and then let's go to 180 and do the same thing getting it now to the uh, right side of the text compared to the normal starting view. Maybe pull it out a little bit more. And while you're dragging your object around the scene with the keyframes, you should be able to see uh, this kind of path line that the camera is going to be following over the course of your animation. So whenever you change the value at a new point in time on the timeline here, it's going to create a new keyframe point. And in fact, what we could do is just copy the values from the original frame zero over here to the 240. So I'm gonna to go to frame zero and let's copy the Y and Z to 240. So I'm just gonna copy the Y at one point in time, the zero, the, the X was zero. So I'll just make that zero. And then the Z here going back to frame zero and then copying it, going to frame 240 and let's paste it in. And now we have the camera going around the text in kind of a diamond shape. So let's go to frame zero, hit play. And now we have this animation where we can see the text from all of the different angles for our little animation. And if you want to see this a little better over here, just click on the percentage over here and set it to fit. That'll use up all of the space. You can also drag on the edges if you need the right preview to be a little bit bigger. Now, if you want to add anything else to your 3D scene, you'll just need more 3D merge nodes and then extra copies of text 3D or shape 3D that you might want to use. So if we want to just add one of those in here, just select your text 3D, click merge, and then that'll pop another merge node right in here, which provides this extra import we can use. So if we want a second text, I think we can just select merge 3D and then click text. So now we have another merge there. So for the text 3D, let's type something in. Just type the word spin, select the font. Let's make it Babis Noi. Decrease the size a bit. And with text 3C and with text 3D selected, let's move its position up here. And with the text 3D selected, let's try using the movement gizmos to move it a little bit above our original text here. I'll add extrusion to it as well to make it more 3D. And then let's have this text spin between frame zero and 360. So let's have our second text rotate between frames zero and 300, the whole animation. So if you go to frame zero and then you go up to the transform tab, you'll see transform is set to transform characters by default. So you can rotate each character individually in this mode by changing the rotation value. If you want that to be the entire word, you just need to change transform characters to transform words. Now when you do the rotation on Y, it's going to be rotating the entire thing. 
And you could actually combine them. So let's just do that for fun. On frame zero, let's keyframe the Y rotation right here. Go to frame 300. And I'll type in 720 for the Y to make two full rotations. So go to frame zero, hit space. And we have it rotating around the screen here. Now, you'll see a lot of crazy stuff happening because the camera is actually coming closer and around the text. But the text itself, as you can see, if you look at the left window, is just rotating here normally by itself. So the extra movement comes from the camera. So let's go to frame zero and actually make it rotate on a character basis as well. So take transform words to transform characters, keyframe it at frame zero, go to frame 300. And let's just make it 1440, which I think is four full rotations. Go to frame zero, hit play. And now the characters are going to be rotating by themselves while the word is also rotating at the same time. So that's a lot of crazy camera movement. But it's just one of the interesting things you can do with a 3D title that you wouldn't be able to if it was a text plus or a basic text title. So as I mentioned, there's also 3D shapes here. So we could just add a 3D plane or box beneath our text if we want to do that. I uh, won't get into objects in this video, but let's just add a quick box in. So I'm going to take 3D text here. I'm going to click on Merge node. So that's going to create our third merge. And then this merge, we're just going to add a 3D shape to it. So this 3D shape, click on it on the node. And let's make it not shape plane, but shape cube, which is going to be like a six sided box with planes on all sides. And let's rotate around the scene. Let's figure out where we should put this cube. So I'm going to move it downwards. And then I can scale its size up to be big enough to kind of sit as a base for our scene. If you wanted, you could make it a plane instead. Depends on if you need to see these other sides of the box or not. And with this 3D cube, we can change its color if we want. Same with the text. So click on the material tab and let's give it a different color. So maybe I want it to be blue and uh, maybe the text I want to change the color as well. So you can go to the shading tab for the text. If you want the sides of the text to be a different color than the front as well, then you can uncheck use one material. By default, it's going to make it all the same. So if you make it orange here, then the sides are orange too. But if you uncheck, then a second material, the bevel material, will pop up here for your 3D text on the sides. You could also change it to black if you want the sides of the text to look more like a drop shadow. And uh, we can do the same thing for the top as well. So let's uncheck, use one material. The main material can be something like a blue. And then the bottom material, we could make a black or a deep red whatever you think is cool. And let's go to frame zero, hit play. And we have our animation rendering again. Now, once again, it might look like the box is moving, but really that's just the camera in our scene. The box is not moving at all. If you want to increase the width and the depth of the box without increasing the height, just click on the box and under controls, uncheck lock width, height, depth. And now uh, we'll be able to, let's see, increase the depth, increase the width, and then change its position without unnecessarily making the box really deep by having a huge height. So let's just increase that more like so. Now we can go to frame zero and let's expand this right preview window so we can see it better, hit play, and we can see the little animation that we've created using 3D text elements. Part of it is not really showing correct with the camera. You might need to move the camera a little further away from the object. Or another option would be to click on the camera, go to controls and increase the angle of view, which will allow a little bit more of the scene to just show through uh, for that camera. So let's hit play now. And this time, all of the text stays on the screen. Well, not quite. I guess it needs to be a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> okay, now it should all stay on the screen. So let's go to frame zero, hit play. And our whole text title is able to show for the entire final rendering of our 3D fusion scene. And we can confirm that by going over to the edit page so we can see our fusion composition. Now there's also gonna be this black area. So that would be kind of your transparency anywhere you wanna show the video background, you can do there. So if I bring in a random stock image to use for the background, and now if I drag this onto the timeline, then you can see that any of that transparency area from the fusion composition just shows your background video clip here. In this case, it's a static image, but if you had a video playing underneath it on video track one, 
then that would be animated and you can see all of that. So that's basically the gist of how you can create 3D titles inside of DaVinci Resolve 18. I hope all of you found this video helpful. So thanks for watching to the end. I've been Chris and I will see all of you in my future video content.